Well, welcome to Resilient Retail. Uh, despite your name being Adam Levine, you do not sing from Rear and Five, correct? That is correct. I'm sadly a, a great restaurant reservation, but always a, a source of disappointment when I turn up and they realize I'm not the Maroon 5 singer and can't sing. Well, I'm not disappointed. I'm so excited to have you on Resilient today. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, for sure. Where do, where do I begin? Uh, I've always <laughs> been in technology, uh, always, in fact, been in mobile commerce for a very long time and mobile technology. And really, I, I wouldn't say retail has been, um, you know, a life calling, but I think looking back on the hero journey of the past few years, I think I was definitely impacted watching my mother start her own antique shop when I was nine or 10 years old. And I think that's kind of stuck with me as kind of we've got embarked on the hero journey over the past few years and thinking about uh, experiential retail and thinking about the role of expertise in retail and watching my mum from an early age build an antique store and realize that, you know, she was really the business in terms of providing that expertise and that great experience to customers and also realizing the role of technology as a uh, a disruptor, but also a positive um, opportunity to change and enhance retail. So uh, I admire uh, the role of technology. I'm a technology optimist. I've always been in technology for a very long time. And it's been kind of a joy to, to be building here over the past five years, which we can definitely get into uh, as we kind of progress, Kristen. Yeah, definitely. So tell us about Hero. What uh, What is Hero, uh, for one? And what's kind of the genesis story of the brand? How did it become this really great tech platform for retailers? Yeah, for sure. So if I track back to tw uh, 2010, just slightly, so... Uh, myself and my business partner, Alistair, now we'd, we had started Europe's biggest app developer. So this was in 2010, when every brand in the world was suddenly trying to work out what their mobile app strategy should be. And we built the biggest app developer in Europe, never building our own apps, but always building apps on behalf of Fortune 500 and FTSE 100. Mm. And part of our business was in uh, fintech. So helping banks uh, build out their kind of core mobile banking apps. And the other half of, half of our business was in commerce, working with the likes of Procter & Gamble and Adidas. And so we were seeing all of this data, building these incredible apps for some major brands. And in kind of 2015, after that company was acquired by a, a fintech business here in the UK, uh, I had this idea for Hero to say, well, we're seeing all of the data around mobile surging, mobile traffic surging, but the experience is really taking, in many cases, a desktop website and bringing it to mobile. It doesn't feel particularly human. It doesn't feel particularly mm. personal. And so we set up to build Hero in with a really simple insight to say, well, what's the one thing people do on their phones more than anything in the world? And it's messaging. It was at the time using SMS and WhatsApp and Messenger and WeChat. And we were seeing uh, how that was playing out to become the way the world communicated. And mm. we said, well, imagine if you could bring that together with commerce. You know, imagine if you could make shopping as easy as messaging a friend. And so I had this idea, um, always in the back of my mind. And then I was traveling South America with my now wife. And we were seeing all of these stores across South America message with their customers over WhatsApp. And we thought mm. they're already ahead of us yeah. um, in Europe. They're ahead of the US. Um, and they're doing this in a really local, organic way where it's kind of one person in the store uh, using a WhatsApp account on one phone to communicate with local customers. And that really inspired me to start Hero. So uh, fast forward five years, you know, we got started in 2015. In 2020, where we've ended up is working with some incredible brands like Levi's, like Nike, uh, like Desium, like Rag & Bone, like Untuck It, Credo Beauty, Jonathan Atlas, some amazing brands. And specifically what Hero does is connect a shopper who's online who needs that same assistance and inspiration and guidance as they would usually find in the physical store. Yeah. And we allow, we allow them to get that whilst they're shopping online. But instead of speaking to a bot or instead of speaking to someone in a customer service center, they're speaking to a, an expert, a sales associate on the store nearest to them. And through text and through chat, through video calling, they're able to connect and get that same IRL experience, but get it online. Yeah, it's uh, it feels like it's such an important tool because, you know, I come from kind of a D to C background, very focused on the e-commerce side and everything ever I was working with brands on was we got to find a way to humanize this experience because it just feels like a corporation selling to a user on the other side of a screen and was really always lacking that human to human connection that you get in retail that is retail strength is you have that you walk into a store, there's one person who can help you think about, you know, what tops are going to look best with those bottoms that you want to try and all of that stuff. So can you walk us through 
you know, what Hero actually does, like step by step. Um, give us an example of how a store associate would use Hero to kind of build that human to human connection on the e-commerce side of their business. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So there's really two sides of, of the technology. You've got the associate experience, so the sales associate in the store using an iPhone or an iPad or an Android device, but they're using the Hero app on their device. Mm. On the other side, you've got the shopper experience online. So if we use Kudo Beauty as an example, a wonderful Shopify merchant and, and longtime Hero customer, uh, if you're a customer online, and you're looking at a clean beauty collection or an item online perhaps you've never tried before, and you need that consultative touch, just like you would be able to get it in the store, you can tap the Hero button that sits in the bottom right of the screen on credobeauty.com. So no need to download an app or register. I can tap that button and within 10 seconds, I'll be connected live to a sales associate in the nearest Credo Beauty store to me. And as I wow. mentioned, the sales associate is using the Hero app. They go available. And then through chat and through video calling, they're able to um, really provide that human to human experience and connection you're used to getting in the store. And there's really a huge incentive for the associates as they can now sell beyond the four walls of the store. They're not waiting for customers to come into the physical store. They can open up the app, be proactive, and suddenly meet all of the customers online that perhaps they would have never met in person. And then likewise for an e-commerce shopper, an online shopper, it's such a personal experience. You know, it, I think about, um, especially through COVID, Every brand has to level yeah. up their online shopping experience and make it more human. And for every brand that isn't Amazon, the one thing they have as a huge differentiator is people, that human experience, that human to human connection. We talk about the human edge, a hero. Yeah. So every brand has this opportunity to provide that human edge. They just need the technology and tools and the innovation to help them do it. Yeah. And I love that so much. And the focus on the pandemic, especially. A lot of these brick and mortar store owners, you know, they kind of live in this bubble of we have the experience, we have that human to human experience. If you walk into Sarah's local boutique shop, she knows exactly how she can formulate that customer experience to then get them to a checkout and to get, you know, a high average order value and all these things we search for in the e commerce world. But we're not talking about like, techie growth hacks and stuff in a retail store we're talking about you know like you said your mom was the business she was the expert she was the one who could sell kind of the experience in the story so i'm sure you've seen a lot of brands doing really interesting things with the tools um you know pre-covid during covid whatever can you tell us just some of your favorite stories or favorite examples from that yeah, we, we have so many examples. And we've had in the, la- in the last year, more than 2 million shoppers wow. interact with the store by hero. So, you know, we, we see, actually, we see some shared, um, you know, uh, reasons for using hero. Often it's around size or fit, or it could be as simple as availability in store. Mm-hmm. You want to know before you go in store, it's going to be there. Um, also through COVID in particular, we're seeing categories like beauty and homeware really accelerate online, but you still need that very assisted sell. Yeah. And then you see some amazing examples where uh, our customer, Rag and Bone, uh, they had a brilliant example where a shopper said, hey, man, I want to look like Ryan Gosling. Can you help? And the associate said, you don't want to be like Ryan Gosling, be yourself. Yeah. You're wonderful. And then went on, went on to style that customer, give these amazing recommendations on the items and the collections. Um, and those very human to human moments are really what makes Hero so special. And what traditionally you would have only been able to get in the store and it's been really missing from online yeah. for a long time. We uh, Another one of my favorite anecdotes is from our, our partner, Credo Beauty, um, where actually the founder, Annie Jackson, was on Hero. So one of her favorite things to do when she's not busy running the company yeah. is to actually spend time in store, open up the Hero app and assist real shoppers. And uh, she was telling us the story that um, a shopper actually said, hold up, I'm speaking to Annie because, you know, in Hero, you can see who you're talking to. <laughs> yeah. and, she, and the customer said, are you Annie Jackson, the founder of Credo? <laughs> and she said, well, actually, yes, I am. Yeah. She said, don't you have better things to be doing? And Annie said, no, not at all. We love yeah. meeting real customers, whether online or in store. It's the most important thing we could be doing. So yeah, we have some amazing anecdotes. Yeah. But like I say, really, it's about giving that that customer online that same experience they're used to getting in the store. Yeah. So if somebody is listening right now who is a you know owns a brick and mortar store, is saying, Wow, this sounds like something that I could really enact in my store. How do they decide, you know, 
is this the right move? Is this the right kind of experiential retail for my store? And how do I start to fit it into my processes? Do you have any advice for somebody who's listening and saying, this seems really cool, but I'm not sure how this fits into all my processes? Yeah, yeah, great question. So I mean, the first thing to acknowledge is, is we started by design working with uh, very major retail groups, the likes of Levi's, LVMH, and Richemont on the luxury side. But my vision that maybe is inspired by you know my mum's store where, that I saw as a kid. But actually, we wanted to work with everyone. And I love Shopify's take on arming the rebels. Mm-hmm. And so through actually the partnership with Shopify this year, we're able to bring Hero to many more merchants and reduce the barriers to entry. So um, actually, just through the starting point, like anything in technology should be simple. Yeah. So any merchant can add Hero to their site with three clicks, no coding. And then anyone who works in the physical store just needs to download the app. So we've tried to remove any of the barriers for a, a retailer of any size to get started. But to your question around how it fits into the workflow, we, we think about the Tuesday at 10 a.m. problem, you know, even pre-COVID where uh, your your store is is uh, is wonderful. You've invested all this money in making an incredible experience, but you're waiting for customers to come in. Mm-hmm. It's almost inefficient in 2020 to be waiting waiting for customers to be coming in when you've got customers on your website. Yeah. And so from, from whoever's working in the store, whether you're a small business owner, whether you're a sales associate working for the brand, you simply open up the app and choose to go available uh, around your own flexibility. So on a Saturday morning, you may not have time to go available, but that's okay. We'll, we'll collect queries from customers and then route them to you when, when you're next online. But when you do have that downtime in the store, you open up the app, you go available, and suddenly you can meet all of those customers. And then about two years into our journey, we added a feature that we called contacts where we gave the associate the ability to stay in touch with those customers. Mm-hmm. And that was really important because you were seeing all of these amazing relationships and interactions by hero. But as soon as the customer left the website or left the store, there was no way to stay in touch. Yeah. And so we made it really simple for the associate or the business owner to say, hey, if you opt in and leave your email address, or your cell phone number, I can text you when the new collection's in, or I can text you about other items I think you love, or I can text you or email you when an item's back in stock. And so if you think about all the hard work that any uh, brand or business puts into a acquire a customer there's nothing worse than seeing them transact once yeah. and then you lose them yeah and so staying in touch is also a really big part of how we think about hero you know it's not only that initial interaction to encourage them to convert but also about keeping them coming back through that great experience yeah i love it so much because it reminds me of the very first episode of resilient retail was with harley finkelstein president mm-hmm. of, of shopify and he talked about this experience um, you know, he's famous for wearing a plain black t-shirt and pretty much everything he shows up for. He has a specific brand, a specific style that he will always buy from. And he has, you know, a very close relationship with the store owner. So every time they get a new shipment in, he gets a very personal text. And, you know, not everybody is Harley Finkelstein, unfortunately. So not everybody gets to have that level of access to a store owner. But it sounds like Hero is bringing that access to people of, you can feel like you have a single person who cares about your shopping experience, who cares about not just that one shopping experience, but then, you know, like the guy who said, I want to look like Ryan Gosling. Now that's become a a longstanding relationship of, well, actually you just want to be a better version of yourself and I'm going to be here for you now. And in three months when we get a new style that I think fits with you perfectly. And it just creates like an unmatched level of connection between a retail brand and a consumer, which I think was lacking in the retail space a little bit before. Yeah, absolutely. We think about democratizing that premium experience for both actually the brand to be able to offer it, Mm -hmm. but also for the shopper to be able to receive it. And doing it at scale is also really important for any brand, you know, being able to elegantly do this. You know, what happens if a store associate leaves and someone else joins the business? What happens to those conversations? And we've thought we've thought of all of those edge cases so the brands don't have to worry about any of that. The technology takes care of it for them. But the shopper experience therefore is just great. We we had a I'll share an example from actually I'll stay on Credo Beauty as a as a shared customer. Um, in April alone, during the first lockdown in the US, one clean beauty advisor, so one sales associate inside uh, a Credo Beauty store, 
I was able to do two and a half thousand dollars in sales just by texting with existing customers. So before they met any new customers on the website, but just by reaching out to their existing customer book. And you're talking about beauty, which is a fairly, you know, low value average order value. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about, you know, expensive premium apparel or luxury apparel. You're talking about, you know, seventy, eighty dollar average order value for for um for beauty. And being able to reach back out to those customers is so powerful for the brand. And as you say, for a shopper to get uh, access to what felt like previously quite a luxury experience, but to be able to democ- uh, democratize that, that's super powerful for the brand and the shopper. And really, again, only humans can do that. You yeah. can't teach a bot to do that in, a, in a, an exciting and authentic way. Um, a customer service team couldn't do that either. It really is about those incredible brand ambassadors and giving them the tools to do this in a really scalable way in, in the 21st century. Yeah, I love that so much. And throughout this conversation, in multiple conversations I've had before, it feels like, you know, 2020 has been just a, a shit storm for everybody, but especially brick and mortar retailers. But there is this silver lining that it almost feels like retail as an industry has been forced to change and evolve. And that means that those experiences when you go into a store, you know, now or in a year or in five years are going to look totally different than they did a year ago or two years ago. What do you think kind of the future of the store even looks like? Yeah, I think you're going to see retailers double down on experience. You know, are you, uh, there's a saying that, you know, you in the US particularly, you know, retail or the US is over retail, too many stores, and too many neighborhoods. And therefore the, the experience is lacking because it's just too, um, it's too monolithic in some ways. It's, mm. it's the same experience in every store you go into. It's been almost, uh, uh, it's down to the common denominator. And actually we think you're going to see the reverse of that where it's all about the experience. You may have less stores, but they're going to be far more experiential. They're probably going to be in the best locations that are far more visual, visually exciting they're going to really double down on service as really that one thing that the brand can do that amazon can't so you've got to mm-hmm. give the customers a reason to come into the store i think the other thing you'll see is less stock just sitting in the store but this concept that the store is going to be more of a showroom essentially where through technology you can have a great experience in the store but through technology that customer may then choose to buy online and again the hero technology allows many of our partners to do that already I think you're going to see more of this concept of dark stores as well, where uh, we already see a number of our partners who are opening their stores earlier in the morning and keeping them open later into the evening oh. to service the web traffic. So yeah. they're closed to customers in uh, in person, but what they are uh, is open to an online shopper. So associates are still working in the store till maybe 7 or 8 p.m., 9 p.m., but they're on Hero servicing online customers. So I think you're going to see some fluidity in kind of opening hours and general scheduling of, of um, uh, store associates from more of an operational perspective. Um, and then for me, it really is about bringing e-commerce closer to the store over Rule. I think this theme of omni-channel has been really played out in our industry and sometimes doesn't feel achievable. And I think Hero is just one good example of um, being able to kind of do omni-channel and kind of tick the box, but it's got to go beyond that. Yeah. Um, I think this idea that stock is going to be far more centralized, not sitting in the store. I think you're going to need um, uh, to really double down on clienteling and the ability to keep customers coming back and utilizing people to do that. I think every brand is going to educate their store associates to be um, less clerk, more Kardashian. It's something we talk about a hero. I love where that. they really are. They're almost the, the micro ambassadors. They're the influencers of the future and giving them the tools to sell in new ways, especially through video. Um, so I'm really excited by the future of retail, but there's definitely a lot of change happening. Yeah, it's funny because I've heard this now with so many conversations and particularly with digitally native brands who are then entering retail is they're thinking about it in this whole new way where, you know, stock is pretty low in those stores. And for even some companies, there is no stock in the store at all. And the entire experience is just around a showroom and getting to know Mm -hmm. the brand, getting to know the products, trying things on, and then being able to order online and have it shipped directly to home. Do you think there is some sort of medium in there where, you know, there are going to be some customers who are okay with that, but then conversely, some customers, you know, you go to the store because you want to walk out with the product right then. How does a brand kind of figure out which side of the line they sit on there? Or is there like a medium way you can kind of play between the two? Yeah, I I think category varies a lot. 
I think yeah. in homeware, you've seen this for years anyway. You know, most uh, high ticket homeware items, you don't walk into the store and take away with you. You experience them. It's almost more of a showroom. Uh, and then you can often will buy the item online. And again, we, we see a number of our partners where that happens or vice versa. You know, you're online and then we'll come into the store um, to actually see it in real life, having, you know, got a great experience first online, making sure it's in, in store to see. Yeah. Um, apparel, I think, through COVID in particular, has really changed where you know, customers don't feel as comfortable about walking into a store and perhaps walking out with the item that's been sitting mm-hmm. on display. They may be less comfortable trying something on. But again, they would rather just buy online where it's going to come perhaps from a um, from a warehouse where something's more uh, wrapped and they feel more comfortable. I think that's very specific to our times and to apparel. And I think overall, though, it's just more efficient. Yeah. I think there's one thing to hero is about efficiency. But I think having stock sitting in stores, especially for brands with you know hundreds of locations across the world, it doesn't feel that efficient. So I yeah. think actually the, this trend and, and rise towards more of showrooms is actually positive where you can... Um, uh, it's stock just not sitting there getting old. You know, I, I think about retail in the US being over-retailed. I think many stores are overstocked in some ways. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And so a lot of times when we think about store associates, and this is something we've touched on a couple of times now, I think a lot of people immediately kind of picture the annoyed high schooler who's on their phone, who doesn't really care, who's just there to like scan your items, put them in a bag, give you the receipt. But that's not really true for a lot of retailers now, especially retailers that are using Hero. How do you think the store associate has changed? And do you think it will continue to evolve in a new way? Yeah, I think it's already evolving pretty rapidly. I think having associates that don't best represent the brand and aren't the best brand brand, brand ambassadors uh, is just not something any brand can sustain. I think yeah. we see many of the D2C and DNBB brands in particular put so much emphasis on the education of their employees and they have such strong brand missions and stories and the brand is really made, great at making sure, you know, I think about Allbirds is a great example. You walk into their stores and their associates know the story so well. They know the founding yeah. story, the genesis story. They know the product range so well. They know the uh, every detail about the manufacturing process. It's incredible because they've been so well trained. So I think training of a store associate is, is really crucial. And I think we're seeing brands really invest heavily there. This role of education managers inside brands is, is so powerful to educate those frontline teams. I think the other thing that's really changing is is the role of online. I, I kind of gestured towards um, the fact that, or gestured towards the fact that um, Less Clark, more more uh, Kardashian is a really powerful trend we're going to see because I think the store associate of the future is less store associate, but more brand ambassador. Mm. And that could be a brand ambassador IRL in real life in the store or this brand ambassador online, whether that's through their own social channels on Instagram or TikTok, whether that's through Hero where they, uh, we have features we're building around video and how we allow them to a uh, best curate content that allows them to get that out in public. Um, I think that's going to be really the role of the associate. And that's really exciting. That means yeah. they're not stuck in the back office. They're not just there to merchandise. They're not just there um, uh, to go and collect items from the, from the back and, and merchandise and keep the, the stock inventory you know, uh, uh, there and fresh in the store. But actually, they can bring personality and empathy to their customer interactions. And again, that's the one thing a robot can't do. Mm-hmm. When I think about this, uh, if we think about industrial revolution and you think about the role of technology taking over our hands, the one thing that technology can't take over is our heart. And being able to build that human connection with a customer is something only a sales associate can do. So I'm quite excited for the role of the associate. I actually don't think those associates are even going to be only in the physical store going forward. Yeah. I think through COVID, we saw about 85% of our customers able to keep um, some or if not all of their teams employed instead of having to follow them or lay them off, but actually keep them employed, but working from home. Yeah. And that's a huge size, seismic change in retail where previously, you know, only the head office colleagues would be able to work from home and store associates would be furloughed. We didn't see that. And this comfort of having store associates be able to work from home and sell on platforms like Hero. Again, that's really powerful shift that's happening. So we don't think about them so much as store associates or sales associates. We really think about them as kind of virtual brand ambassadors. Yeah, I love it too, because it feels like you know, you mentioned e-commerce coming closer to the store experience, creating this omni-channel. I think a, a really short way to put it is like, it's all just commerce now. Like commerce yes. is one thing in multiple different experiences. And what's exciting to me from a very human perspective is 
you know, now that brings a lot more opportunity for these store associates where somebody who knows e-commerce like the back of their hand and knows how to build campaigns and talk to customers in our world right now is going to be valued higher and paid higher and getting better benefits and is a full-time employee more so than, you know, a part-time store associate. But it feels like it's giving people this opportunity to get into this new industry that is very hard to break into in a way that's very comfortable for them and supporting of what they actually care about. And it just, it's like hopeful for the whole world of retail that we're, we're going towards a, a much more humanized and professional kind of retail experience that is actually just a win-win for, you know, the retailers, the customers, but also the people working for the brand, because now they're able to get more opportunities that provide them with kind of a launch pad for their future careers. And that just feels like this other side of hero that maybe is a little bit unspoken, but like, it's really arming people too, with the ability to then go and like extend their careers more than they probably could have thought of before. Yeah. And if we, we zoom out on a macro level, you know, retail is the biggest employing sector in the US. Yeah. You know, one in 10 people work in retail. And, um, you know, for most people, their career springboards are working in retail and you learn, you know, amazing skills and qualities you hold forever in terms of uh, face-to-face skills and selling and understanding people and building connection. And uh, uh, so these are such powerful skills. There's often been, you know, misconceptions about the role of the store associate as well, or feeling that it's, um, you know, it's a stopgap opportunity for people. And I think that's um, that's going to change when you can bring e-commerce and digital into the equation, because the store associate of today and the future is digitally native. They grew up with tools like Instagram and Facebook yeah. and TikTok. As you say, there's a huge skill set there that they that they that previously hasn't been tapped into. Um, so we, we're really excited because we're about empowering those store associates, allowing them to do what they do best, leveraging those skills that they haven't previously been able to tap into. And I think it means that that role going forward is really exciting. Yeah. And you see, you see already, you think how many people are influencers today, but really this role of almost like the micro influencer is the store associate. There's no difference. If you think everyone wants to be a, an influencer today, yeah. um, then, and they don't want to be store associates, but actually meeting somewhere in the middle, this role of a micro influencer is really powerful. And I think a huge um, opportunity to keep retail as one of the highest employing sectors in the US um, and across the world, but also one that reinvigorates it, makes it exciting again. Yeah, it just comes back to kind of the theme of this whole show, which came from a quote directly from Harley in episode one, which was, retail will never die because retail will always evolve. And it feels like we're seeing this in, in like a live action film of this industry evolving into something better and more human and more supporting of more people. And that's just, I think overall, from any industry perspective, that's really exciting. And and I'm excited to see what happens. And these are kind of the, the resilient brands that are, are leading this charge into evolution. So, you know, I come from a tech background, so I know that, you know, Hero is working on all sorts of cool new things as you do in tech. So what does the future look like for Hero? Is there anything super exciting coming out that you want to kind of allude to right now? Yeah, definitely. I, I think actually our team has been, work, been working really hard on you know, scale because we really wanted to be there for our merchants and partners over the past few, uh, few months in particular. So getting, you know, really scaling the platform, scaling into new markets has been really key. So we are uh, now in 13 languages across 30 countries. Wow. And, you know, as a young business, that's um, that's really changed for us over the past few months. So scale is kind of the, the first and foremost. But really the, the area I'm really focused on uh, uh, I've really focused the team on over the past few months and we're really excited by um, and in fact I think we can announce almost exclusively on this podcast Yay! that there's a real push towards video um, so we introduced a feature called video, uh, video calling earlier this year about a week before the pandemic so wow. almost with fortuitous good timing yeah. because it's been a really powerful tool for our merchants and partners um, but actually what we're announcing over the next few days and I think on the day this podcast will come out hopefully fingers mm. crossed um, <laughs> uh, there's a feature called shoppable stories and what Shoppable Stories is, is bringing the power of stories that we find today on Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and WhatsApp and bringing that to e-commerce for perhaps the very first time. And so that means as a shopper, uh, I can land on a brand site and as well as being able to browse the site and be able to chat with a store associate as I previously would, before I start chatting, I can actually browse these 15 second uh, curated uh-huh. videos by the store associates. So just like I would on Instagram or, or Snapchat, 
but I'm able to browse those videos. I can shop them if I wish. So if I see a great item of an item up close and it's a recommendation by that associate, I can watch that video and go straight to the product page or I can add it to my cart to buy. Or I can say, actually, that product's great. I hadn't, I hadn't really seen that before. This is brilliant. That's really inspired me. And then I can use that as a springboard to then chat to the associate either with a text or chat or video. Um, but for us, it's a really powerful new feature because um, it means those associates now have the ability to create, curate video content, yeah. these, uh, short, snackable videos, and then be able to upload them. And for them to be seen by millions of customers who are hitting the dot com site, you know, over um, over a period of time, to then watch those videos and increase their opportunity to to earn. Because the way our platform is built, every time a shopper interacts uh, and the associate is influencing that sale, the associate gets the credit. So this is a real fantastic new earning opportunity for the associates to be able to create this content, but immediately make it shoppable. And from a customer perspective, it's really helping them inspire them with what to buy next. You know, whereas Hero has been really valuable to say, I'm looking at this item. Can you help? What size should I buy? Um, or what's the right item for me? This is really taking it one level up to say, what's hot in store right now? Yeah. What's cool? What's the top recommendations? And don't not from an algorithm, but from an associate in the store who can say, these are my favorite shoes. These are my favorite trainers. Yeah. This is the item I love. This is what's really trending right now. Um, so those associates can create the content. They can upload. Uh, they can be instantly shoppable. They can see in real time. Uh, which videos are being most viewed, which ones are being most purchased. Um, and from a brand perspective, we think this is going to really help inspire those shoppers, bring what we've all become so familiar with, with social media, but bring that to the brand's own .com site. Um, and really, if I, I think about our mission to humanize e-commerce, that's really what this is doing. There's no more, there's nothing more human seeing a face and being greeted yeah. by a store associate who, just like they greet you in store, they can now greet you online. So yeah, we're really excited about this feature. Oh, it's so exciting because I, I think about from a consumer standpoint, the number of times I've said like, man, I love this brand. I love what they stand for. I want to go buy something from them. And then I land on their site and it, it it's almost this like rabbit hole of, okay, I go to women's hot right now or trending or most popular or it just, and it kind of feels like you can go, almost get lost in that journey of like, I actually don't know what I should buy first. And to just land yeah. on a site and have that, human interaction and we are used to that experience of stories to say like there is a human on the other side saying we just got these in and like here's what it looks like here's what it feels like you should definitely check it out it just kind of takes a lot of that ambiguity out of the first purchase and then like you mentioned every repeat purchase after that because you know i'm thinking about i just just renovated this this office into a studio and it was one of those guessing games of like okay i bought this couch so what coffee table would match it and like trying to build that all online was really difficult. But if I had gone to that site and somebody said like, oh, here's a like a showroom of that couch with this coffee table and this rug, like it looks really good together. Like, boom, swipe up, I'm done. I'm ready to go. I, I bought everything yeah. I need. It just feels like that feels like such a powerful feature for e-commerce that's wildly missing right now. Yeah. At, at a macro level, if you think e-commerce hasn't really evolved beyond... Uh, the static image, yeah. a search box, and then a product page with a text-based description. Yeah. So don't get me wrong, it's definitely got smarter. And you know, of course, platforms like Shopify have helped merchants um, you know, bring technology to market they previously wouldn't have been able to. At the same time, the basic principles of how you consume the information on the page hasn't fundamentally changed. Yeah. But we've all seen on social media, the way we interact is through video. It's consuming stories. It's the most consumable content and it's so authentic. And I think through COVID, we've all become more comfortable with browsing very authentic content. You know, the, the production value in some ways has almost gone down, but that's a positive yeah. because it's almost democratized. Um, you know, we're used to seeing TV hosts now sitting in their living rooms <laughs> at home creating content where previously would have been in a really glamorous studio yeah. with makeup on and everything else. And so actually consuming authentic content is what drives that connection and bringing that into e-commerce is really powerful. And if you think about in particular what's happening in China, where video is the way in which people are shopping, you know, already a huge percentage, I think up to around 20% on the latest stats I was reading of commerce is transacting through video-based shopping experiences, whether that's live, whether that's curated snackable videos, uh, almost like on the, the, the Chinese version of TikTok. Um, that's really what that premise is centered around today. It's about being able to watch a video and then be able to interact and comment or go straight through to buy having that bit with that item being brought to life 
life in such a different way yeah. and a far more human and, and rich and immersive way. Yeah. I'm just thinking about the number of like Twitter conversations I've had within the e-commerce community of like, you know, I was trying to buy some running shoes a couple months ago and I finally posted on Twitter, like, if you are selling running shoes, please put them on a model and give me a video of them walking around because I cannot figure out what in the world they're going to look like on my feet from just like a static image in front of a white background. And this just takes it even further. And then I think about the number of times I have bought something on Instagram from an influencer who is saying like, oh, here, I'm scooping this protein powder and then stirring it. And it just creates it, it takes away some of that hesitation in purchasing. And so it almost feels like what this feature does is it empowers brands to become influencers through the people that work for them, which before was, you know, you're trying to play on the Instagram algorithm and you're trying to play against actual single influencers with millions and millions of followers. Now you're able to kind of bring those experiences together so that the people who are actually on your site are getting that same personal touch. They're getting over the barriers of purchasing something online because you can actually almost get a feel for what you're buying a lot better than even you know a model walking in a video will ever give you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is really how and what why Hero has been so successful the last few years. And you know, for those two million shoppers who have used Hero in this way over the last two years, uh, sorry, the last year, they've been able to get that experience, but they have to have um, someone available in the store in that moment. Yeah. But we were seeing, and I'll, I'll give you the, the genesis of the idea: a, a shopper could come to the website at three a.m. Or midnight, for example, is a really common shopping time. People yeah. are about to go to bed. They're on the website <laughs> in particular on their phone. And it's the last thing they do before they turn off the lights and go to sleep. They shop. Yeah. But if the store isn't available, then they're not getting that same rich experience they would previously have got if they were able to chat or video call with an associate. And we were at Hero looking at all these incredible videos the associates were uh, creating and sending for just to one customer. Yeah. And we said, well, what if you could take those videos that are being sent to one customer and suddenly make them accessible in the same way that uh, a shopper is used to seeing them on Instagram or TikTok or Snapchat, but bring it to the e-commerce experience? Because you know, I'm, I'm a fan and believer that commerce will be everywhere and anywhere, anywhere the shopper wants to buy it. Yeah. At the same time, the brand's own dot com site is really their most powerful channel where it's the one where they'll never be disintermediated. It's the one where they can really own the experience end to end. That's not relying on a, a third party channel or a social media platform. And I think there's a real opportunity to say, well, um, rather than just conceding the dot com site and saying commerce should only happen on um, the social platforms, um, let's still make sure the, the dot com experience is as good as our flagship store would be. Yeah. Um, and I think there's such an opportunity to make um, the, the uh, dot com site even more rich, as rich as social media. So the two can um, at least be almost have parity in terms of the usability and the overall experience. And it's not just, you know, the site feels like a relic, but Instagram feels really visual and immersive. I think it's about bringing some of those um, uh, design patterns and familiarity, but bringing that to e-commerce. Yeah, I love it. And I'm so excited about everything you guys are doing at Hero. I, I think you're innovating the evolution that is happening and you really are, you know, giving store owners the power to do something they've never done before, which is just really exciting. Um, now I have to ask you, we ask everybody on this show because it's called Resilient Retail. Um, it, it feels like Hero is rooted in resilience and is empowering resilient merchants. But what does resilience mean to you? Yeah, I think resilience. I think for me, it's about spotting the opportunity to keep evolving. You know, nothing stays still, and especially in technology and especially in commerce. And always spotting the opportunity in the chaos, I think, is what makes and separates great brands and great entrepreneurs and great founders. And I think retail um, hasn't always been the most innovative industry. And I think COVID in particular has been this great accelerator towards e-commerce and digital. And it hasn't been a disruptor. It's been an accelerator which brought everything forward. And so I think there's more of an opportunity than ever to see uh, entrepreneurship in action and resilience in action. And we're seeing it. We've seen it over the past few months, whether that's curbside pickup, whether that's virtual shopping through platforms like Hero, whether that's um, being able to do uh, a click and collect for retailers here in the UK that have never done that before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think there's so much resilience happening. And I think it's all about you relying on digital and technology, but allowing the brands to do what they do best. And for us, it's that human edge unlocking that because there's always uh, the elephant in every room, which is the marketplace and one big one in particular <laughs> with a 
the one that has a smiley face logo yeah. that brings perhaps misery and sadness <laughs> to lots of small merchants. And so I think there's such an opportunity in retail. I've never been more excited by commerce and retail, but it's about not burying heads in the sand. It's about spotting the opportunities, but doing it that always starts around, uh, doing it in a way that always starts around the customer experience. That's yeah. where we always begin. It can't be about what the brand wants to achieve. It can't be around, around what the retailer wants to achieve or even the store associate. It has to be about what the shopper wants. Commerce has always been shopper dictated and shopper led. And so provide that experience that the shopper wants and keep coming back to that as the North Star. That's always my advice to our, our partners. I love that so much. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming and sitting down with me today. This has been such a fun conversation. And I am excited to uh, see and hear you in two days on Thursday because listeners remember this is Hero Week. So on Thursday, we, <laughs> we have Adam and then we have Romaine from the detox market. We're going to get into more kind of the brand side, some storytelling. So I'm so excited to see you again in two days. And thank you again for being on today. Thank you so much, Kristen, for having us. And yeah, I'm looking forward to speaking again in two days. Thank you so much.